Today's speaker is no stranger to Shopping. He was a 1992 grad. He ended up playing Division I tennis for the University of Detroit before transferring to West Liberty State College and finished his Bachelor of Communications. After getting married, he found a good job at the Longsburger Company, where he worked for five years. Since then, he has started several businesses, including Hosman Marketing. Hosman Marketing has grown substantially, now with four, four full-time employees and a sales staff of six. His presence in the promotional products industry has grown as well. He is on a national, non-profit board in an industry called Promo Kitchen, and out of 300,000 industry professionals, he has most recently been recognized as one of the top 15 social media influencers. Mr. Hosman has served on many local boards, confirming the leads and giving back to this community. He has been president of the local Kiwanis Club, president of the local convention and visitors bureau, and president of the Shopton City Council. He was also the 2010 recipient of the Shopton Young Leader of the Year Award. Mr. Hosman is also a published author. His first book is titled, Think Big Marketing for Small Business, and the second, Delivering, Mar Delivering Marketing Joy. He is currently working on his third. Of all these accomplishments, he is most proud of his titles, father and husband. He is married to Amy Hosman and father to Skyler and Jade. Please help me welcome the commencement speaker, Mr. Kirby Hoffman. Thank you, Mr. Farr. Graduates, staff, parents, grandparents, younger siblings that don't actually want to be here but are being forced by your parents. <laughs> It's truly an honor for me to be here today. When Mr. Farber called and asked me to speak today, I was stunned. My first words were, so have all the teachers that taught me finally retired? How did I get by the selection committee? I say that because I remember myself as a student here that struggled my first two years at Kishaka. At the end of my sophomore year, I had a two-point-ish grade point average and was in trouble a lot. When signing up for classes my junior year, I told a faculty member that I was going to start making honorable every time, and they laughed at me. That's, that's how much confidence I inspired as a student. I even had a teacher tell me they wished they got to vote on the most likely to turn a teacher's hair gray so they could vote for me. It's kind of a dubious honor. But then I realized the one thing in common with all of my problems at that time was looking in the mirror. So I made a choice to be better. Now, it was not an easy. I continued to make mistakes, but when I made that choice, life got better, more interesting, more fun. And along the way, I picked up a few lessons that I want to share with you that I hope will help you in your next season of life. Here we go. Continue to grow. Now, I'm not talking about the freshman 15. <laughs> now that you're graduating, please don't make the mistake that so many think that you're done learning, whether you're going on to further education or not. Learn as much as you can about as much as you can. It not only makes more life, life more interesting, and it does, but it also helps you be more interesting, and it has the added benefit of helping you be more successful. Be willing to fail. Now this has levels. If you fail at skydiving, it's game over. <laughs> but in most things in life, you fail, you learn, you try again, you get better. That's how it always works. But as we get older, we get afraid to fail. Sometimes we think, think it's going to be something stupid or bad or silly. But the fact is, that's how we learn cool new things. Try, fail, push yourself, good things happen. Remember, life begins just outside of the comfort zone. Stretch your perspective. Leave the zip code, people. I love Kishoppin County. I grew up here. 
But there was nothing I wanted more when I was your age, other than to win Wimbledon, than to leave Kajak. I think it's important that we all leave. Because Peshawar County is a great place to live and work and, work and uh, uh, start a family and start a business. But how do you know that? Unless you've had something to compare it to. Go, see, explore, gain that new perspective. And if and when you decide to come back, we'll do so with an expanded perspective that can help us grow and improve our community. Now here's a side note for everyone in the room. When you do come back, don't insult your shock to those who choose to live here. If you don't like it, that's cool. But don't be so narrow-sighted that you lose sight that I choose to live here. If you continually say it sucks, you're saying I suck. Be smarter than that. <coughs> don't use the words they and deserve. These are victims' words. There's no group in the world that gets more blame than they. They should be doing this. They should be doing that. They don't owe you anything. Say instead, I'm a part of that. We're starting a new group called We, and you are welcome to be a part of it. It's amazing what you can accomplish if you don't wait for others to do it. In addition, don't use the word deserve. You don't deserve anything. You earn it. No one owes you a good job, a good community, or a happy life. If you want it, go get it. It's up to you. Replace the word deserve with earn. I think you'll be happy with the results. Push out good, get good back. Want to make the world a better place? Do one good thing. Now, this isn't some hippie, uh, new age notion. It's science. When you do something nice for, for someone, you get a boost of what's called oxytocin. It's a chemical in the body that makes you happy and it also helps you help be healthy in other ways. You get a boost of that. And that's cool. But the person you did the good thing for gets a boost of oxytocin as well. That makes sense. But here's the best part. The person who just happened to be there, the person who saw it happen, actually gets an equal boost of oxytocin. You want to make the world a better place? For real? Be kind. Choose better thoughts. Here's the most controversial thing I'll say today. Humans don't create thoughts. Before you dismiss me completely out of hand, let me give you an exercise. Stop thinking. Go. Remember, stop thinking is a thought. Instead, keep in mind that thoughts are coming to you all the time, like a ticker tape at the bottom of the CNBC investment channel. What you do have the power to do, however, is to choose good thoughts. When you see one that comes across and says, I'm not good enough, or I can't do that, or I'll never, I'll never be successful, let those thoughts go on by. If you get one that says, hey, I, I can do that, I work hard, grab that thought, grab the right thoughts. You can't act inconsistently long time, long term, with your thoughts. So if you want to have a better life, choose better thoughts. Exercise. So often we give this up when we leave our youth as well. But don't. This doesn't mean you have to run a marathon, though that's not bad. It only means you need to take care of your body. <coughs> Exercise not only makes you healthier, but it decreases stress. It helps you sleep. It increases brain function. So for all you intellectuals out there who look down on athletics, don't. Exercise makes you smarter. So do it before it's too late. <coughs> Define yourself by things you love. I think there are way too many people in this world that define themselves by things they don't like. They say, I hate hip-hop music, or I don't like liberals, or Kanye West. And who does? <laughs> but don't be just anti-stuff. Be pro-stuff. Be passionate about the things you love. Be unabashedly excited about the things you're excited about. People will respond to it, and it will make your life more fun too. Be nice to people you don't have to be nice to. You can tell the true character of a person by how they treat people they don't have to be nice to. 
Most everyone's nice to their boss or someone who can help them in some way. But the fact is, if you're a jerk to the waitress, you're probably a jerk. Tell them about it. I have a rule in life that you can ask. That if I ever catch myself talking about someone in a good way, I make a point to go and tell them. When you have something nice to say about something, let someone, someone let them know. You never know how much that might mean to them at the time. Send a card, email, text, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever. Just let them know. You will never be disappointed by pushing good out into the world. We could use more of it. Finally, choose yourself. One of the great mistakes in life, I think, is to wait for someone, anyone, to give you permission to be awesome. We go to school, follow a path, and hope that someone will give us a job. We wait for them to give us an opportunity. We hope that they will fix the potholes, improve the economy, start a business, or make the world a better place. Stop waiting. If you want something, anything, to be better, do it yourself. Don't wait for a job. Create one. Don't just join a movement. Start one. It's not for me to give you permission. Choose yourself. I'll end with a final thought in a little. Three frogs are sitting on a stump, and one of them decides to jump off. How many are left? I'm waiting. The answer is three. The one decided to jump. He didn't jump. It may sound trivial, but it's the difference between a life work lived and not. Nothing really matters until you take action. If you have an idea, great, but so what? What did you do about it? What action did you take? It goes back to the beginning for me. It's all about choices. So choose to do. Go out and make your mark on this world. Make us proud. Write your book. Start your business. Fall in love. Start a family. Get a job. Whatever. Just do. Choose to do. Congratulations, Travis.